<coughs> Hallelujah. <coughs> um, today's lesson is titled, Yah's Hidden Ones Are Exposing Themselves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, there's a scripture in Psalms, and I remember when I first read the scripture, I understood what it meant. And this is in Psalms chapter 83, verse 2 through 8. <clears throat> and the bar, I'm have you read it. Okay. Psalms chapter 83, verses 2 through 8. Reads as follows. For lo, your enemies make a tumult, and they that hate you have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against your people and consulted against your hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against you. The tabernacles of Edom and Yishmaelim and Moab and Hagram, Geval and Ammon and Amalek and Phil Philistim with the inhabitants of Tesor. Assyria also is joined with them. They have helped the children of Lot, see Lot. Okay. Now, when I first read the scripture years ago, I, I was like, wow. It actually lets you know what has happened to us as a people. That they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. Notice it says thy hidden ones. Why does the scripture call them hidden? <laughs> Think about that. Scriptures cause them hidden, okay? And if you were to look that up in the Hebrew, this is what you have. It says, Sapan, which means um, to hide. Privately, privately, secret. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, to hide, you got to ask yourself now. So, who hid them? He says, "My hidden ones," as if he is the one who did the hiding. He's hide. the one that hid them. Now, what is he hiding them from? The mm -hmm. wicked one. <laughs> I believe that um, he's hiding them uh, from their identity. Because notice it says they have taken crafty counsel, meaning they know who we are. Yeah. All of these nations of the world know exactly who we are. And they always drop in hints on the fact that they do know who we are. They're putting it in movies. I think the Most High was taking it from us for a reason. Mm -hmm. okay, well, he hid us. And, and notice it said uh, that the name of Israel will no more be in their remembrance. And then when you look at another passage, it says, but they came to themselves. Yeah. So now what you have going on, mm -hmm. this is actually what you have going on. That is true. Okay. I believe that the high ups do know who we are and they're content as long as mm -hmm. we don't know who we are. Yes. The minute we find out who we are, they get scared because they know they once we cry out to our father, then they know the judgment can come. So they want us to stay in the darkness, basically. Sleep. Okay. Sleep, that's right. Now let's go to Revelation chapter 12. I want you to see something here. Okay, Revelation chapter 12. And we're going to start at verse, uh, let's see. Let's look at verse 14. Before I have you read it. Revelations chapter 12, verse 14. I'll actually read um, 13 through 14. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, and to her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. So now, what's going on here, if you read this whole story here, 
basically there was a man child that was born of this woman. Okay, it tells you in the beginning that this woman had this man child. And as soon as Satan was about to devour this child, this child was caught up into heaven, basically. And so she, so the, the, the devil, Satan, was wroth with the woman because this child got away from him. So he went up into heaven and made war. And, and when he went up to heaven to make war, he was cast down to the earth. So when he got cast down, he said, well, I'm going to get this woman. You know, since I couldn't get the man child, I went up there trying to get her, I'm going to get this woman. So he goes after the woman, and what happens? She's given two great wings of an eagle where she's taken into the wilderness. Away from who? The face of the dragon. He's hiding her in the wilderness. Now, why is he hiding her from the dragon? Because the dragon wants to do what to her? Kill her. That's what the dragon wants to do. It wants to make war with the remnant of her sea and it wants to destroy her. Okay? In so much, if you read the next verse, it says, and the woman was given, okay, the next verse after this, and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. But the earth helped the woman and opened up her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out. So this dragon wants this woman. And the next verse says, And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make a war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of Yahuwah and have the testimony of Yahushua HaMashiach. So you see how this dragon is trying to get Yah's people? But Yah says, you know what? I'm going to give them great wings. I'm going to hide them in the wilderness. And say, well, you in the wilderness somewhere? I'm going to throw a flood out that way. Somewhere I'm going to get you. Right? So we got to keep this in mind. So we think we got to understand it's a reason why, why Yah made us hidden. It's a reason why. Okay, but we're trying to expose ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. But it's a reason. Okay, now let's look at this, right? Let's go to Psalms chapter 119, 11. And this is the scripture. Okay, it says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Mm -hmm. Now you ask yourself, okay, why do you have to hide the word in your heart? What's the reason for it? So we won't sin against our father. Our That's father. right. So we won't sin. But there's another reason too. I'm going to show you this reason. This is in Matthew chapter 13. I'm going to have you go to it. Matthew chapter 13. And this is verse 19. That's okay. We'll just upload it and hopefully we'll work these bugs out next time. Matthew chapter 13. Verses 19. Verses 19. Let me have you read another verse with it. Hold on, let me see. Okay. 13. Yeah, verse 19. Okay. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and understands it not, then comes the wicked one and catches away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. Now, did you hear that? So there's a reason why you have to hide the word in your heart because the wicked one is coming looking for it. Mm -hmm. So he said, I got to hide the word. You got to hide the word in your heart. It got to be hid in your heart. can't just be in your heart. They got to be hid because Satan wants to even take that. You see, now you see how the scripture tells you about hiding, that it's important that things be hid, okay? Now, I know that we want to shout things out on the mountaintop, okay? And we should as it relates to our people when you're witnessing to your people, you spare not, tell your people about their transgression, let them know who they are, and reveal that thing to them. But let me show you something here. Now, I want you to look at this scripture here in Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs chapter 14, verses 34, reads as follows. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. That's right. Righteousness exalts a nation. So... 
the, the, think about the scriptures, right? When the, when the Most High makes this statement, or should I say when, when the Mashiach makes this statement, he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. You see, it says righteousness exalts a nation, exalts a people. It's righteousness that exalts us. So if you live a righteous life, people are going to be drawn to Yah because you're living a righteous life. Mm -hmm. You don't have to wear a flag saying, hey, I'm a Hebrew Israelite, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to do those things because all you have to do is just live a righteous life and people will come to you and they'll say, man, I see that you're blessed. Mm -hmm. You understand? That's why he said, if I be lifted up, <laughs> yeah, see, he these, will draw all men He will draw. See, you these, see? these Hebrew Israelites, they're trying to exalt themselves. That's why when you look at their clothes, they, they got the afros or locks all uh, done and stuff. They got their sunglasses on with a big, bad Power Ranger uh, outfit, trying to look all big and bad with their assembly and whatnot. And that's not really drawing any attention to the Most High. That's drawing carnal self attention and you're exalting yourself. I mean, That's I remember right. one time seeing a picture of a so called Hebrew Israelite and he had a crown on his head. Mm -hmm. Like, dude, mm -hmm. so what you think you're a king now? Did the word tell us to declare his name, Yah's name, or did it tell us to declare our name mm -hmm. or our title? Which was it? The Most High said that we should publish his name. Exactly. Throughout the world. And so all of this um, self-glorification that we see going on is not glorifying our Father at all. It's not. We are supposed to be the hidden ones. Yeah. If we lift up the Father through our lives, through our righteousness, then that will make others look upon and say, look at those righteous people, and then they will want some of what we have. That's They'll right. say, I want some of what she has or what some, what some of he has because... He is living righteous. He is blessed. She is blessed. People should want to, to um, cleave unto us because we are blessed. Notice, it did say that the Gentiles are going to want to cleave to us, right? Do you see any uh, Gentiles wanting to cleave to those who are saying, look, we're going to be killing y'all? No. <laughs> They're trying to get away from them. They're trying to get them locked up. That's right. You see? But when they find a righteous Israelite, they do want to cleave to them. That's right. You see, and so we have to be very careful that when we are a light, That's being right. a light to the Gentiles does not mean that we have to declare who we are. Matter of fact, uh, you know it's amazing? The story of Esther, Brother Paul brought this up one time. We were talking, and he brought up, brought up the story of Esther. Let's go to Esther chapter 2 and look at verse 10. And the I'm going to have you read it. Esther chapter 2 verses 10 reads as follows. Okay, hold on a second. Esther 2 and 10. Okay. Actually, go oh, re read verse, um, <laughs> go Esther chapter 2 verse 9. Uh, what's this here? Esther. Oh, this is additions to Esther, okay. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> you got it yet? Yes, that will. The flip of a page, I will have it. Did you want to read it? I'm going to say something really quick. Okay. What I find funny about the Israelites, and that's why this story of Esther is so great. Now, um, our people, we have this bad habit of when we find out anything good about ourselves, whether it's um, we, whether we find out that the Egyptians were so-called black people or the whole world was so-called black people at one time or we find out that we're descended from Israel, we just feel the need to, because we've been so trodden down, we want to uplift ourselves. Yeah. But I remember hearing some Israelites talking about the fact that we're like superheroes and whatnot. If we were superheroes, then y'all wouldn't have allowed us to be in slavery. If we were superheroes, we would fly up out of here. Yeah. So we, gotta, we should be glorifying ourselves. We need to glorify our Father. And that is one of the problems we are having. Exactly. Right. The thing is, too, what we fail to understand is, yeah, we did have some mighty feats in Scripture. Like, you know, Elijah running across the land all fast or Naphtali running on top of the corn stalks and all that kind of stuff, right? But what we fail to understand is that 
that stuff was only possible because we had the most high working in us. That's right. But in the case of Samson, when he sinned and his hair was cut off, the spirit left him and he was he had the strength of any old ordinary guy. And they was and them Philistine heathens was able to subdue him. That's it right. was only after um his hair grew back and the most high came back on him that he was able to accomplish his strength once more. I'm going to read the scripture that my husband told me to read, but before I do, i got to expound on what Elijah just said. Mm -hmm. um, remember the Pistons, when they won, they started wearing uh, some of those t-shirts called Fear the Fro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Was it some power in that hair or something? I mean, is this why they want us to get rid of our maps? Is it something going on with that? Because it was the one fella, I forgot his name, they had that big wild fro. <laughs> It, it was oh, him. He was. He was. Anytime anybody came near the basketball rim to shoot, he was knocking. He was swatting. They, they ben shots Wallace. Down. Ben Wallace. That's right. He was swatting. I mean, so everybody was like, "Fear the fro," because he was just knocking the ball. Out. He said he, he was just tearing them up. And so yeah. he said, "Fear the fro." So it, it makes you wonder when you think of the story of Samson. Uh -huh. How when we go among the Gentiles, they're afraid of their fro. They want us to cut it off. That's right. Get that hair off your head. They don't want us braiding it up. They want us to straighten it and press it, just like Becky and all this other stuff, you know. And they want our young men to shave it down yeah. and have a nice little bob, low cut hairstyle. That's right. Because they don't want. Is, what is it about those naps? We're gonna have to check into that one of these days. <laughs> um, because Samson lost his strength when he got rid of me. That's right. Uh, so anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and read Esther two and ten. It reads as follows. Esther had not showed her people so nor... So we read 9 and 10. 9 and 10, okay. And the maiden pleased him, and she obtained kindness of him, and he speedily gave her things for purification with such things as belonged to her, and seven maidens which were meet to be given her out of the king's house, and he preferred her and her maids unto the best place of the house of the women. Esther had not showed her people nor her kindred, for Mordecai had charged her that she should not show it. Okay, what that's basically saying is, because if you look at other translations, it's really saying that Esther had not said what family or people she came from. For Mordecai had given her orders not to do so. Mm -hmm. So he told her, don't tell them who you are. Don't go in there, don't tell the king who you are. Don't go in there and tell them what people you're from. Keep that quiet. Don't tell them that yeah. you're a Hebrew Israelite. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it quiet. You see that? <laughs> That's kind of funny. She didn't sell out neither. That's right. So there's a reason why the Most High made us hidden, okay? But we're gonna get deep into this because I want you to see all these scriptures that deal with this, right? Now let's go to um, first, uh, Maccabees chapter 2, and we're going to read verse 41 through 44. Let's first, go on. No, let's give it a message. Oh, okay. Uh, first Maccabees chapter 2, verses 41 through 44, reads as follows. At that time, therefore, they decreed, saying, Whosoever shall come to make battle with us on the Shabbat, we will fight against him, neither will we die all, as our brethren that were murdered in the secret places. Then came there upon unto him a company of Hasatins, who were mighty men of Israel, even all such as were voluntary devoted to the Torah. Also all they that fled for persecution joined against themselves unto them, at, and were to stay unto them. So they joined forces and smote sinful men in their anger and wicked men in their wrath, but the rest fled to the heathen for help. Okay, now if you, if you read here and look at this, right, it says that um, also all they did fled for persecution, joined themselves unto them and were stayed unto them. So they joined their forces and smote sinful men in their anger and wicked men in their wrath, but the rest fled to the heathen for secure. So think about what's going on here. You see, you see what's going on? You see, so it's because we as a people have always been hunted. Okay? We've always been hunted. 
Think about Black Wall Street, right? It was because they were seen and they had started a city and people were aware of it and they were seeing them uh, rise up in such power. And what did they do? They came against it and destroyed the city. You see? So that's why we should be hidden. You understand? That's why we should be hidden because Satan has a wickedness that he's trying to do against Yah's people. And so it's all over the scriptures though. Let's look at this scripture here. This is Barak. Okay, chapter 2. Verse 30 through 32. 30, 30, 30, 30. <clears throat> First or second verse? Uh, it just says Barak. Chapter 2, let me go to this one and see if this is it. And this is what it says. It says, For I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff, stiff necked people. But in the land of their captivity, they shall remember themselves. Now listen. And shall know that I am Yahuwah, their Elohim. For I will give them a heart and ears to hear. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name. Hallelujah. Now, are you understanding what they're saying here? Yeah. Huh? What is he saying? Huh? They're not going to think on themselves, <laughs> who they are. I'm a big, bad Hebrew Israelite. No, they're going to think on Yah. And they're going to praise who? Yah. They're going to think, they're going to praise him, and they're going to do what? Think on his name. In the land of their captivity. In the land of their captivity. Mm -hmm. Where are we? In the land of our captivity. In the land of our captivity. <laughs> you see that? So whose name should be lifted up in the earth? Uh, our name should not be lifted up That's in right. the earth. Who we are should not be lifted up. But who the Most High is, His name should be declared. That's yeah, honestly, right. We should be calling ourselves Yah followers, not Hebrew Israelites. <laughs> you yes. You know, it's funny. In one one of the interpreta interpretation Bibles that restored to the original names. It calls us Yahuans in the scriptures. Wow. Hey, that's and that's some Yahuans. Matter of fact, it was two or three you interpretations that I looked up before, and it said Yahuans. That that's what we were referred to as Yahuans. And that's some. Think about the scripture that says, <laughs> "If my people, which are called by my name, that's right, will humble themselves and pray." That's we're trying to be called after Greek and uh, Latin names, but he says, "My people, which are called by my name." That's right. So we keep going over this. We should be lifting up the name of our Father. That's right. Okay? Because we are the hidden ones, but we are exposing ourselves. We talked about this before. When you're in a battle, mm -hmm. and there's a strategic way that you're supposed to set up that battle. Okay? There's a strategy to it. That's right. But when you are a part of a group of people who have said, okay... Uh, we know what the word says, right? Right now, everyone thinks that the Jews in Israel are the true people of the chosen people. That's who they think they are. And so they're okay with the, the scripture saying that they're going to get the victory because they look like them. So they're happy with that. But the minute we say, no, we are going to get the victory and have the upper hand over our enemies, us, now all of a sudden, you're it's terrorists. A, yeah, it's an issue. You're terrorists. Even though you're declaring <laughs> what the Bible says. That's right. Even though you're declaring... Uh, what they have been declaring for the so-called Jews, they've been making these declarations, and everyone's been cheering, yes, Israel is going to be protected, right? Yeah. But when you find out Israel are so-called black people, Israel are terrorists. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isn't that crazy how folk think, oh, now we terrorists, you see? So this is why we are to stay hidden. That's right. The scripture says, O Zion, put on thy strength. It's going to be at the most high's time, in right. his time. It is Not time. in our time, but back to the battle plan. Yeah. If you are wise, you would not be saying, okay, enemy, this is what we're going to be doing. This is our next mark. Um, in 2019, when our captivity is up, we're going to be killing, we're going to be doing it. I mean, this is literally what they're saying. That's, that's like saying, 
Massa, I don't like you, Massa. So we gonna do this, Matt. What if Nat Turner did that back then? <laughs> yeah, tell me. About it's it. really, really not wise. It's foolish to behave in this way. That's right. It's like you're telling the enemy um, you have a, a, a hand of cards, a deck of cards, and everyone's been dealt a hand, and you're saying, "Here's my hand." Yeah, you Yo, I gotta draw you have four an ace on of spade, you. A, a, a deuce of spade, a, a diamond, a jack of heart, and all. You telling it, "Here's my hand." So now they can plan their next move against you. That's right. You are supposed to be hidden, Yisrael. Yeah, you're supposed to be hidden. It's like a game of chess. You know what? Yes. His, history always repeats itself, and this is amazing, right? Now, you think about um, Joseph, right? Mm -hmm. He fled with the baby Messiah. Why? What was the reason for it? To hide him. To he flee persecution. <laughs> yes. Now, now, why did he do it though? Who told him to do it? Did anyone tell him to do this? No. Nope. <laughs> we gonna get the most go to the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Look at, I'm gonna show you this. Listen to this here, right? It says this is Matthew chapter two, verse thirteen through twenty. I'm gonna read this, okay? It says, when they were departed, behold, the angel of Elohim of Yahuwah appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, and flee to Egypt. Wow, the myths right here. Wait a minute. <laughs> ain't that something? He told him flee. So some of y'all sitting up, you said, nah, I ain't running. I ain't going to be hitting it. The, the, the Ruach, huh, through the angel here in a dream, told him take that child and flee. Right? Then he goes on and he, and he says, flee to Egypt and be thou there till I bring word, bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Y'all hear this? So is it foolish to try to keep your children safe? Or should we just say, here he is. Here they are. Mm -hmm. Come take are my kids. Are we foolish to yeah. try to keep our children safe? Yeah, isn't that something? Hmm. Now look, look at the next verse. It says, when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night. Why didn't you leave by night? <laughs> you should have left in the daytime. High so everybody noon. could see you. So everybody could see where <laughs> And departed into Egypt. And, and was there until the death of Herod. So they stayed there until Herod died. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Yahuwah, by the prophet saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Okay, then it goes on and says, Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked, of the wise men was exceeding wrath and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coasts thereof from two years old and under according to the time which he had diligently inquired by the wise men. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken of by Jeremy the prophet saying in Ramah there was a voice heard lamentation weeping and great mourning Rachel weeping for her children and would not be comforted because they are not. Now, what happens after Herod dies? Listen to this. But when Herod was dead, behold, the angel of Yahuwah appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. I mean, I mean, you can't get no no clearer than that. He said, okay, now now that they are dead, the ones that are seeking the life, now you can come unhidden. Now you come out because they ain't seeking your life now. So come on back over here to um, Israel. I mean, look at Moses' story, too. <laughs> let's what did go his mom too. do? Yeah, let's go there. <laughs> That's what I said, repeats itself. Go ahead. Yeah, living the fight another day. There. And when you stand up there and try to fight, your, your whole family's gonna be conquered. That's right. You hear that? Once, once like, they take down the head, once they take you down, now your family, if they do escape, gonna be scattered. Mm -hmm. And then you gotta, now you may have the potential of children raised up, uh, that are gonna be raised, raised up without a father. That's yeah. right. That's right. right. That's how you give it to fight another day. You know. That's right. Exactly. It's exactly. not a righteous fight that our people are trying to enter into. Because remember, um, the children of Manasseh, I believe it was, they entered into a battle 
uh, before they were supposed to. And the Most High said every last one of them were slain. They were all cut down because he did not ordain that fight. Okay? Mm -hmm. You are not standing for righteousness because you want to hold the name of Hebrew Israelite. That is not standing for righteousness. That's right. Standing for righteousness is something totally different than what our people are trying to That's make right. it out to be. That's right. Mm -hmm. Standing for righteousness is to live righteous regardless to what people say or do. That's right. If someone tells you that you have to eat a certain way, you say no. If someone tells you that you have to um, accept a certain lifestyle, you say no. You reject that. Someone wants you, I'm, I'm just going to use um, homosexuality for instance. They are really pushing that hard and heavy. The Christian church has done what? They folded under pressure. Mm -hmm. They have now said, okay, it's okay to be homosexual. It's okay to be a lesbian. They're saying it's okay to do what thou wilt, right? But right. standing for righteousness is to say, I will not stand for something that the Most High has called an abomination. That's right. Exactly. That's right. Mm -hmm. Let's go to that Moses story. This is Exodus chapter 2. And Deborah, I'll have you read it. Verse 1 through 4. <clears throat> okay, Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 through 4 reads as follows. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took to be his woman a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw him, that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months, and when she could not longer, no longer hide him, she took him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with a pitch and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags by the river brinks, and his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. Now, now she hid him for three months. She hid him. Why? Because the same thing was going on that happened in the time of um, Joseph, in the time of when the Messiah was a baby. The same thing was what happened in, in Moses' time because Pharaoh wanted to go and kill all of the young children. You see? And so the same thing happened then. And she hid her child. Man, she, she should have exposed her child and stood up like a true bad Hebrew Israelite. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? It ain't making no sense. And all that get and get understanding, family. That's right. Get <laughs> understanding. That's right. Mm -hmm. Get understanding. So now, let's go a little further into this because I had a bunch of scriptures that we took down. And I want to cover some of these things now. Now, <clears throat> why are we supposed to be hidden? Hmm? Huh? Why does she hide her son? Yeah, Was she ashamed purpose. of the most high? Was she ashamed? Nope. Huh? Mm -hmm. She had a purpose. Um, her son had a purpose. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Was she ashamed being called a uh, uh, Hebrew Israelite? Which we know that was what she was called. <laughs> the child of ancient Israel. Yeah. I mean, was she ashamed of that? No. Is that no. why she hid him? No. No. You see, she had particular reasons why she hid him because she knew Pharaoh was off trying to kill all of the young males. And she said, I'm not, I'm had my child. You know, no, she was a coward, wasn't she? <laughs> you know what cracks me up about this, right? I don't understand why we can't grasp this concept. Now let me ask you a question. You ever notice animals in the wild? Don't animals in the wild hide their babies? Yeah. Uh, why? For protection. <laughs> For predators. I mean, think about it. Don't they hide their young cubs? Huh? Animals That's and bears and all. They, it's, you think about the lion, right? He's watching a, 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 a documentary about lions, right? And how uh, the buffalo, the buffaloes would seek out to kill the cubs because they knew that those cubs would grow older one day and kill them. Wow. And so the the, uh, the the bison, they would break off into groups and they would chase off the parents and then the other ones would listen for the sound of the cub and they would charge that area of the cub so they could kill them. Damn. Wow. Is it possible you can repeat that a little bit louder? Uh, okay, we was watching a documentary about the, uh, the buffaloes sure. and the lions. And the buffaloes had strategically come together to seek out the cubs of the lions because they knew that when they got older, that those same cubs would one day try to kill them. And so some, bison, some of the uh, buffalo would chase off the, 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 uh, the females 
and then other ones would listen to the sound of the cubs and charge the area so they could kill those cubs. Damn. Wow. This, this is the king of the jungle now. You, you hear this? <laughs> so then they yeah, even the king of the jungle hides their cubs. This is nature deep, telling us how we are to be. <laughs> nature. And it's also telling That's us deep. how the enemy is. The That's enemy right. wants to get the parents, get rid of the parents. That's right. So that it can destroy the children. Wow. Mm. But here we are, the hidden ones exposing themselves and their children. Yeah. Come and get me. Let your righteousness exalt you, not your name. That's especially right. Especially when your name is backed up by right. violent rhetoric. Mm. That's right. And heathenistic origins too. Yeah, that's Come right. Now. Come on now. You think about the example, the what I example, the, the parents going through all that persecution right now, right? Yeah. It's because of the name, right? Because of the name is attached. One to of it. the reasons. One of the reasons, yeah. right? And so you think about that cub, as innocent as it is, as a cub, ain't got nothing to do with harming those buffalo now. But that buffalo know that when that cub get older, it's coming to seek out wow. and kill them later. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> that, that is something and see that's what we got to understand we got to understand what we're dealing with here mm -hmm. we it says that that um satan is like a roaring lion seeking who we may devour and he has a people mm -hmm. and his people don't like us mm -hmm. you understand and they want to destroy us that's just that's just, it's, it's been in the word for years that that the yah's people have had enemies that wanted to destroy them notice the scripture says i um, seeking whom he may devour that's right? right. Meaning whom he has permission. We've talked about this before. He's seeking whom he has permission to devour because the Most High is the one who puts the enemy on those who are children of disobedience. Right. But if you are righteous and if you are truly a light to the Gentiles, the Most High says even your enemies will be at peace with you. Wow. Sure. Now let's look at this here. You hear what she said? Now it's funny she would say that because this next scripture is important. This is Matthew chapter 5, and I'm going to read it, verse 14 through 16. Listen to what it says. Because I know some of you all may think to yourself, well, wait a minute. The scripture says we're the light of the world, and shall we hide ourselves? I want you to look at that scripture. It says, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. So a person will look at that and say, well, whoa, wait a minute. It says it can't be hid. Let's keep reading because get an understanding, right? It says, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and give it light unto all that are in the house, right? Now it explains itself, right? He says, let your light shine before men. Other words, it's talking about your good works. It goes right on and says that. That they may see your what? Good works. No, that they may see your Hebrew Israelite? No. Yeah. No, it said that they may see your what? Good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Glorify your Father. That's which is right. In heaven. Yes. Not glorify you. Yes. Glorify your Father. Hallelujah. You see? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. 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 So now let's look at this again. Let's go to this next one here, right? So, Yah hides his treasure, right? Mm -hmm. We are his treasure. Hallelujah. Look at Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. Now, let me ask you a question, right? If you had some treasure, okay, in your house, and you have some treasure in your house, let's say you have some, some old ancient coins that may be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? Huh? Are you going to leave those coins sitting in the middle of your dining room table? I think the best place is on the front porch <laughs> so that when someone comes on the day, they don't even have to break in. They can just take them and go. Yeah, just leave them on the front porch. So the mailman, everybody else come out here and look, see these $100,000 worth of coins, right? And then they just, oh, you know what? I'm not going to bother those. It's not hidden. Alone. It's right here in plain sight. In plain sight. When you have something that's precious, you do what? Hide it. You hide it. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. <laughs> you hide it. Okay, now look at the scripture in verse 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. The which, when a man hath found, he hideth. Mm. And for joy, therefore, goeth and selleth all that he hath and buyeth the field. Mm -hmm. Can I say something about Wow. <laughs> Go ahead. I think the wicked understands this concept. That's why when yes. you look at... Uh, 
the way the government works, the way other secret societies work secret in other communities, yeah. they hide their stuff. You look at how the government deals with their confidential documents. It stays confidential for years until they say, well, you know what? It will benefit us now to release this document 50 years after its initial writing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They'll have classified information. You look at how the um, Illuminati works completely secret in their operations and the things that they do. Look at the Freemasons, completely secret. But secret, then you get, confidential, classified. But then you get over here to uh, the children of Israel and we're like, here it all is, just look at it, y'all. <laughs> well, it's, it's, just, it's just amazing to me that when you have a treasure, you hide it. And to me, that's just common sense. Now, the proof that we are here too, it even says this in Colossians chapter three, Verse 3. Okay, I'm going to read that one. It says, For ye are dead, and your life is hid in the Mashiach and Elohim. What in does that mean? Your life is hid. You are dead, but your life is hid in him. So even your spiritual life is hid in him. Huh? Whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> you, you see this? You see how important it is we're supposed to be hid? Huh? Mm -hmm. But see, we come all out and say, as soon as we stick our head out, we looking all around, you know. We we were all hidden down in the bunk. Now we stuck our head out. We looking all around, you know and then we I start making there. noise. Yeah, you know what? I'm, 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 I'm a Hebrew. Next thing you know, Counselor all of the food. wicked is gathering around you right now. You just running your mouth. You, you know, know running you your mouth. You just your head all up, and you ain't got no protection. You just running your mouth. You know. You know what it reminds <laughs> me of? It reminds me of when I go out there in the backyard. Boogie is walking around looking for rodents, and then you get a stupid groundhog stick his head out and get got. <laughs> he stick his head out looking around, you know, and they say, got him, ouch. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, come on now. You know, I, I don't understand it myself, but you know what? I've always felt this way. This is the way we've always felt. That's why I was always kind of, and I would never forget when I finally decided, you know, I'm going to start wearing my garments. And I know, I know, I understand it. A lot of us have spent a lot of money on garments. <laughs> we want to wear these guys. Let's show my garment and all this stuff. And I did that for a while. I was going out in the neighborhood here, the, the town and the city, all everywhere, just wearing my garments, right? Didn't care. And then all of a sudden, I started getting this reaction from folks. And I was like, people thought oh, we were Muslims. Thought we were, Asalaamu Alaikum. Yeah, people were like, Asalaamu Alaikum. They thought we were Muslims and everything. And I was like, I said, hmm, that's not good. You know, exactly. and I started thinking about it, and it wasn't until I had a dream that the Most High gave me this dream, and it made me say, you know what, I'm going to be careful. And I'm going to cover that dream, too, in a bit, but I want to cover these other scriptures, okay? So, we got to understand, now, we look back, we say, well, yeah, that was way back then, that was the scriptures he was hiding back then, everybody was hiding, but now it's time. No, 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 it's, 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 it's going to keep reading, right? Let's go to Acts. I want you to see this scripture here. This is Acts chapter 9, verse 23 through 26. I'm going to have to borrow read it. Acts chapter 9, verse 23. You ain't got pretty good in that seat for average. <laughs> <laughs> His hands help. Yeah. <laughs> Before I go on and read the scripture, though, I wanted to kind of uh, say something about uh, the passage that said, Put ye on the Husha HaMashiach. Yeah. that your life is hid in him that's the problem a lot of these Israelites don't even believe in Yahushua HaMashiach yeah. this is why they are dressing up the outer man and not trying to tend to the inner man at all because many of them, not saying all of them but a lot of them don't even believe in Yahushua HaMashiach they yeah. don't believe in the New Testament and so they are putting on their Hebrew garments instead of wearing or putting on Yahushua HaMashiach so therefore their lives are not hid in Yahushua HaMashiach. That's right. Okay. That's right. Acts chapter 9 verses 23 through 26. And after that many days were fulfilled, the Yahudim took counsel to kill him. The Jews. But their laying await was shown of Sheol, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the Talmudim took him by night and led him down by the wall in a basket. And when Shaul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the Talmudim, but they were all afraid of him 
and believe not that he was a Talmudite. Okay, disciple. Okay. So now let's look at this for a minute, right? <clears throat> tell, my, tell my Paul, Shaul. Now, it says, after that many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. So now, they, and, and he found out about that they were lying in wait for him, right? So when he found out about it, then he walk on out there in the daytime and say, uh, hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> did he do that? Yeah. What did he do? It says, and then, then the disciples took him by night. Why by night? And let him down the wall in a basket mm -hmm. because he knew that they were trying to kill him. Mm -hmm. So here he was hidden, right? Mm -hmm. Because he knew they were trying to kill him. Notice it says they watched the gates day and night to kill him. So they were there waiting and watching. Waiting anyway. and watching. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> They're there waiting and watching. Mm -hmm. They still doing it. Still, yes. Still doing it now. Mm -hmm. Still doing it now. Yep. Seeking whom they may devour. Think about even how David dealt with Saul, right? Mm -hmm. How Saul yeah. was out there seeking his life and everything, right? David sneaks up behind him, hidden and quietly, you know, all that's right, just silent and whatnot. Then he cuts his robe, and then from a far off, way far off, on top of a hill somewhere, he shouts down and lets him know what happened. Really, that's right. As far as him sparing his life and whatnot. No, he was supposed to go up there and face him, like just straight up face him, though, right? That's right. Now that's what they, that's what <clears throat> our people think today. That's right. Yeah. There's nothing wrong at all with him using common sense. Using common sense. You can't use that scripture that says, "He that seeks to save his life shall lose it, and he that seeks to lose he that loses his life shall find it." That doesn't apply to what we're talking what about. What I find interesting about that scripture too is, "He who loses his life for my sake." So in other words, you calling yourself a Hebrew Israelite and then you lose your life. You really lost that for a title. You didn't really lose it for the sake of Yahshua. In other words, you weren't sitting there with someone who had a knife to your throat saying, deny Yahshua right now or else I'm going to slit your throat. Mm -hmm. In most cases, people are saying, you're a terrorist. You, you call yourself one of those Hebrew Israelites. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so... They're not persecuting you for righteousness sake because our righteousness <clears throat> is not attached to who we are called unless we are called by the name of our Father. Yeah. And we are living according to the ways of our Father. And you know, it's amazing. It's amazing, too. Let's just hear talking about all this. I'm glad you mentioned David, too. Now, here's a story I want you to, I want you to think about, right? Now, I want, you, I want to read this to you first. Let's go to, this is 1 Samuel <clears throat> chapter 20, 21. And I'm going to start at verse 10. But this is what it says. <clears throat> and David arose and fled that night for fear of Saul. And went to Achish, the king of Gath. <laughs> and the servants of Achish said unto him, is, this not, is, is, is not this David, the king of the land? Did they say... Did they not say, sing one to another of him and dance and sing? Saul have slain thousands and David his tens of thousands. And David lay up these words in his heart and was sore afraid of Achish, the king of Gath. And he changed his behavior before them and framed himself mad in their hands. Yep. And scribbled on the doors of the gate. And let spittle fall down out of his beard, uh, upon his beard. <laughs> See, he's, he's like, man, they gonna kill me. I better act like I'm crazy, you know? I'm gonna act like uh, uh, spittle on her. No, 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 no. You gotta ask yourself, nah. why did he do this? This is a man after y'all's own heart. He ain't foolish. He did what he had to do. You see, be wise as serpents, but harmless as doves. Huh? Can you imagine that? <laughs> I bet that right now on the wall doing all that. I bet that That's was what crazy. I said I would do too. If I was in, I'd be like, wee, wee. <laughs> That's that crazy, man. Yeah. Hiding the David that they knew of. Huh? Uh -huh. Who's hiding the David that they knew of? Like, yeah. Is this David? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because they knew. They said, "Wait a minute, is this that mighty man?" Because they were gonna kill him, no doubt. Yeah. But it's when like, they saw how he was, they said, "Oh man, he like, gone." Uh, <laughs> 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 you know? Like, nah, this ain't. This must be David's crackhead brother. I don't oh, think this yeah. is David. Right Let's here. just leave him alone. He crazy, y'all. Let's just back away from this crazy dude. You know. 
<laughs> but we got to remember these things, right? It's important that we understand that we have got to be wise. Yes. Okay? Now, um, go ahead. I'd like to say um, we have to keep in mind that the scripture says, um, when it says, O Zion, put on thy strength, that is a time, a set apart time that the Most yep. High has. We have to remember that because there have been different instances throughout time yep. where our people have risen up in their own power. You know, That's right. Manasseh did it, the tribe of Manasseh did it, <clears throat> Nat Turner did it. Yeah. It wasn't time. Go to I remember time. even the disciples nice. said, Is it time yet? Right. Yeah, they were ready. The they were getting swords in their Peter was Peter cut off somebody's ear because he's ready to go to battle. Most I said, no, not yet. You sure took the ear and healed on it. That's right. It ain't time yet. It ain't time to cut off the ear, Peter. Just give it a little season. Give it some time. And you're going to come back. You're going to come back. Give it a couple, a couple of thousand years. You know, and we're going to come back and we're going to do this thing, you know. But it ain't time yet, you see. This is why we have to listen for the proceeding word. That's right. Okay. The Most High is going to lead us and guide us into all truth and the times and the seasons and all of this. That's right. We can't get ahead of the Most High. And I think that's what a lot of us are doing. We are trying to step ahead of him. And we need to back up and let him lead. Instead of saying, wherever I go, let the Spirit follow me. No, yes. it should be wherever the Spirit leads, I will follow. It's that pride. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. It's the pride. You found mm -hmm. out who you were. You're like, man, that's me? You mean tell me I'm a descendant of David? I'm a descendant of the Mashiach? Man, I'm a descendant of Judah? Wow! J Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? And let that stuff get in your head? And you just, oh, man, I gotta tell the world this. But what happens when you tell the world? They look at you like you're crazy anyway. Right? right? Don't they look at you like you're crazy? Even your own people look at you like you're crazy when you tell them. Unless you got something that's going to convince them. We're, we're going around telling people that we are royal. We have royal blood, right? That's right. That we, are, we were kings slaves. and queens, right? Let me ask y'all this. Were every last one of us kings and queens? <laughs> were all of us kings and queens? Peasants and servants. Huh? No, all of us were not kings and queens. Our people were, okay? But every last one of us were not kings and queens. They were not. That's right. That's right, they were not. That's right. So now, let's look at this. Okay. Um, this is John chapter 7, verse 5 through 10. And I, I can read that one. John chapter 7. Five through ten. <clears throat> Okay. For neither did his brother believe in him. Then Yahusha said unto them, My time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. Go ye up unto the feast, I go not up yet unto the feast for my time is not yet come full okay and when he had said these words unto them he abode still in Galilee but when his brethren were gone up then went he up also unto the feast not openly but as it were in secret you see that why because the next verse says then the Jews sought him out at the feast and said where is he <laughs> <laughs> they were looking for him. So he said, I'm going to go up in secret into the feast. I'm just, I'm going to wait let the apostles go and go. Then I'm going to sneak up in there like I'm just an ordinary, normal person just showing up at the feast. Now the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Yahshua, right? Right. <laughs> what was his mindset at that moment? Exactly. 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 So let's keep all of this stuff in mind. Now, I remember years ago, we had a brother that sent us these um, Hebrew Israelite flags. It's probably a good five years ago or more. Mm -hmm. And um, they were supposed to, um, they had magnets on them and you could put them on your car, you know. And I remember when I looked at that flag and I saw the Hebrew Israelite on it, and I said, you know what? I'm not driving around this neighborhood with that flag on the back of my car. It looks like a bullseye. 
You know, I'm, I'm not trying to tell, hey, I'm a Hebrew Israelite. And they say, well, are you a Hebrew Israelite? Well, let me go to the internet and see what this is. And they go and they type it up and they see that stuff that you see on the internet. Mm. Huh? I, I knew five years ago I wasn't trying to go there. That wasn't common. And it's not like they're pulling up all of the wise men of Israel that are speaking and That's declaring right. Yah's word they, and they righteousness. They ain't going to get that. They going to get all that other being stuff. Being a light to the Gentiles. Yep. That, that they're not getting that in mass. That's okay? right. You may get a few here and there, but for the most part, they are getting those who have made a mockery of That's this right. awakening, a mockery of this truth. That's what they are getting. That's right. <clears throat> You know, um, I want to mention my dream that I had. I, I already told everyone this dream. Matter of fact, when we uh, went to, uh, was it Louisville? I think it was Louisville where I talked to everyone about the dream. And I mentioned it. Yeah, it was Louisville. Yes. And in this dream, it was it was such, I tell you, this dream, it, it really bothered me really bad, you know, the dream. But anyway, in the dream, me and my family, uh, actually, it's just me and my wife, um, actually, in this in this area where there was a lot of people, just a lot of Hebrews, Israelites, all around us. A lot of those that believe that they are the children of Yah, okay, according to the flesh, were all around us, black folk, basically, right? And all of a sudden, in the midst, people just started getting slaughtered. I mean, they were getting slaughtered like you wouldn't believe, just getting slaughtered. And right away, I, 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 I grabbed my wife and, and I, we started telling some of the people to come and follow us, you know. Come follow us. And there was a tunnel that we saw in the distance. I said, we got to go through this tunnel so they can't see us, basically. And we would go through this tunnel. But there was a lot of the people that wouldn't, they wouldn't follow us through this tunnel. They actually decided that they were going to go up above the tunnel and walk on the upper road. While we were going through the tunnel, we could hear a major slaughter going on above us. And we could look up, we could hear everybody screaming, those that chose to take that high road and be seen. We're all getting slaughtered. That's right. Now, when we made it through the tunnel and we were okay, we made it through, i never forget the look in the eyes of the people that we, that we had led through this tunnel. Because on the other side, it was a little safety, but I remember the Most High spoke to me and told me, now tell them to blend in. And I was like, blend in? What do you mean, blend in? So I, I, I'm like trying to understand it. He said, blend in? I'm trying to figure it out, you know? And so anyway, I remember we were coming away from everybody. We told everybody, blend in. Don't worry. Just go to your own places and just blend in. You're going to be all right. The Most High is going to look after you. Just blend in, right? So we departed, and then that's how the dream pretty much had ended. But I'll never forget, one day, my wife said this to me. She said, honey, she said, and she was, she said, um, it was about the garments. You remember what you said? No, I was saying that um, you see how we go around and we wear all of these defined garments, you know. People are thinking that we're Muslim when we wear these garments. And I said that we should just wear just regular garments, not, not anything flashy or anything um, exposing or anything like that just regular garments right you know uh, many times we'll wear um, we were talking about farm clothes when we're working out in the garden and stuff you yeah. just kind of wear your farm clothes or whatever and I would say just pretty much just wear our regular clothes even when I go to the city she's like, even when you go to the city for stuff to the post office and other places you know don't wear the garments and when she said that it hit me I mean it was like it was like oh I get it Blend in. It was like right when she was saying it, it hit me. Blend in. It's like the most I want. This is what I was saying to you. Tell them to blend in. Mm -hmm. You know? Not blend in as in being in sin. No, of course not. Or conforming to the world. conforming to the world. That wasn't what he was saying. Mm -hmm. So when I took that, I said, wow, I get it, Father. Because our clothes do not determine our righteousness That's as it relates right. to us putting on Hebrew garments. That's right. Because, believe it or not, most of us. Um, that are wearing these Hebrew garments, some don't even believe in the Mashiach. So how does that <laughs> determine your righteousness? That's right. Some don't even love their brothers and sisters. That's right. So how does that determine righteousness? Some don't even love and worship Yah. That's right. So how does wearing Hebrew garments determine righteousness? That's right. Especially when you look at how technically 
the fabric all comes from the same place. The Hebrew garments that a lot of these people wear were once uh, dismembered pieces of fabric that was in China being sewn together by heathens that worship false gods. Not just China. Actually, I found out that the majority, yeah, the majority of fabrics come from India where they believe in false gods. That's all fabric. So but if you got curtains in your house, those curtains probably came from, that material probably came from India. Yeah. Exactly. And so it's like you're sitting up saying, oh, well, you're wearing a t-shirt. You're going to hell now. And but, I have unholy right to set apart garments. <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, your set apart garments material came from the same place that this t-shirt that I'm wearing came from. That's right. You know, so. Exactly. exactly. And all that getting get understanding. It's like we forget we we'll serve the enemy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Until, until we yeah. It doesn't matter. Every corner you turn, like everything is made in Japan, China, Asia, India, some other country. We ain't making nothing. You ain't making nothing. You hear what he said? We ain't making nothing. So the table, yeah. the chair you sit in right now, huh? the carpet you walking on, yeah. huh? That the majority paper. of carpets actually are, are weaved in other countries too, like India. Huh? So, I mean, think about what we're saying. Your computer parts. Most of the stuff that wasn't even wasn't even um, manufactured in the United man. States. Mm -hmm. These parts. This is fallen angel technology. The so fallen have, angels brought this to the earth. Yeah, yeah, so we have to stop establishing our righteousness based on that's right things that we have or that's things right. that we title ourselves. Physical things. Righteousness that's right. is a way of life. Family. That's right. It's a way of life. It's a way of thinking. That's right. You see, <clears throat> that's right. So it's just you know we we just gotta understand. The most high hear us, right? Mm -hmm. He hear us. Why are we trying to why are we trying to show ourselves when the most high has already hidden us? He has us hidden. Right? We have to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Harmless as doves. That's right. Okay. Um, let's look at Luke chapter twenty one. This is the last scripture and then we're gonna um we can't take questions. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna bring it on home, family. Yeah. And we hope that you all can hear and understand where we are coming from That's and, right. and not try to twist our words. That's right. You see, we are telling our people, yes, be righteous, live righteous, okay? Right. Uphold and uplift the name of Yah. Stop <coughs> trying to glorify ourselves. That's right. Because at the end of the day, that's what we're doing, that's glorifying right. ourselves and not the most high. That's right. Yeah. Oh, that's on Luke chapter 21, verse 35 through 36. And it reads as follows. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Adam. Wow. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? So, so mm -hmm, go ahead. pray that you will, you're accounted worthy. To escape? To escape. <laughs> <laughs> this stuff is coming. He said, Are you kind of worthy to escape this stuff. So, when you see destruction coming and you see something heading your way, you're not supposed to just go stand right in front of the destruction that's coming your way. Okay, you're supposed to get out of the way of it. Huh? I got two points I want to make on that, too. Now, if y'all wanted us to just straight up expose ourselves and just go and die at the hands of the sword and all of that kind of stuff, then what is the point in the marriage supper of the Lamb in which he takes us to escape from all of that stuff? And then second of all, on top of that, I believe the Most High, he's not a, yeah, a, he's not a God of confusion, you know? And so you look at nature and like Paul was saying, how um, the animals protect themselves and whatnot. And they're children. That's right. Now, only at a last resort, in other words, this is like the final thing you can do. And you're basically back in the corner and you have one or two choices. Now, I saw this video where this, um, this image where this gazelle, this mother gazelle had given her life for her children mm -hmm. to yeah. show her true dedication to those children of hers, to those cubs. Mm -hmm. So now, I think if it's a life or if it's a straight up situation where you have one or two choices, deny Yeshua and you can live, or don't deny him and you get your head cut off. Yeah. Then that's when you need to be talking about not selling out. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. But it's like if you can protect yourself, it's it's, it's kind of like when you're playing the game of chess, right? Are you gonna just say, 
put your king in checkmate. No. But at the last resort, when you can't move your king anywhere else, then you have to accept the fact that you're defeated. Oh man, you put me in checkmate, man. That's right. You won fair and square. Mm -hmm. That's how it is. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing to win you what you're saying. Talking about chess, the, the, the way you win the game is by keeping your king protected. <laughs> <laughs> Not putting them all out there in the open so you can just get... Yeah, put my king in check. You know, checkmate, you know, then it's over with. Game over. Mm -hmm. You know? If you're going to die, if you're going to be persecuted, family, let it be for righteousness sake. That's all we try to say. We understand persecution has, it has come. It's That's not right. just coming, it, it already started. Okay? Mm -hmm. Our people have already gone through a great deal of persecution. And we're just saying, just let it be for righteousness sake. Don't let it be for foolishness, okay? Right. Is that hard to understand? Yeah. I think that people are just trying to be fair psycho and they're trying to put words in your mouth. That's yeah. all that is. Because yeah. any, a lot of people who are listening to what we've said agree with what we're saying, because it, it's common sense, but it's only those who are trying to be vindictive or fair psycho who are trying to put words in our mouth and make it seem as if we're blaspheming and we're turning against our own kind and being sellouts and whatnot, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Someone called me a race trader. I, I just had to chuckle at that. I was like, man, a race trader. <laughs> this is so funny. These terminologies getting thrown out like that. Race, race trader. trader. No, I am unapolog unapologetically an Israelite, okay? Mm -hmm. I love being one of the children of Abraham, Abraham, Isaac, Yishiak, Jacob, Yaakov, okay? I just gave you two versions of the names. I am glad to be in that number, okay? I thank the Most High for that, and I'm not going against that at all. Mm -hmm. well, we're not, we made that clear, <laughs> you know? So, um, you know. But I am not a Hebrew Israelite. No. If anything, we angry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Eber, the sentence of Eber, mm -hmm. you know, but anyway, um, do any of you all have any questions? I can't ask them any questions, they can't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just thank the Most High, and I pray that this lesson blessed everyone, you know, we're going to um, upload it as soon as we can, I guess they don't hear that, see? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll type it in the chat, let them know. Okay. okay, but anyway, we're going to say um, uh, we love you all and Shabbat Shalom. Shalom.